is the, uh, the, the CEO and chairman of Alibaba, the big uh, Chinese concern, and he's had to walk a tightrope here between authorities in China who really don't necessarily take too kindly to that sort of free care of uh, Internet that, that he espouses here. So walking a tightrope with regulators there and also with trade representatives here who think that uh, Alibaba, you know, sells a lot of counterfeit goods. He, of course, argued just the opposite here. But he has forged a pretty good working relationship uh, with the president-elect. Uh, you could say, because of the chilly relationship he's had with the Obama administration as a result of these investigations into counterfeit goods and the rest, which, by the way, I stress have not been proven. But he has committed uh, one million U.S. manufacturing jobs. This is apart from SoftBank, the uh, Asian uh, conglomerate that is committing itself to 50,000 U.S. jobs as part of a $50 billion industry consortium that already includes the like of uh, Apple and others pitching in a billions to make a go of it and to commit those jobs in the next few years to Swiss America Chairman Craig Smith, former UBS Chair Robert Wolf. It is very rare, Robert, and with you, begin with you, uh, for Donald Trump to accompany someone downstairs to the lobby after meeting with them. The last one that comes to mind of business heft was the SoftBank CEO and now Jack Ma. What do you make of that? Well, listen, Alibaba is one of the biggest firms in the world, and, and Jack Ma is an entrepreneurial tycoon. And so it's not surprising that we want to make sure that we get this commerce going. You know, trade goes back and forth. And I think at the end of the day, we have to figure out how to make sure we do business with Chinese companies the appropriate way. You know, uh, Craig, I was sort of going through the numbers here. It depends on you know what you believe or what you see. But the one million job commitment here over the next few years, they just leave it a few years. U.S. Steel accelerating investment in the U.S. after conversations with Donald Trump. IBM promising to add 25,000 of them in the U.S. in the next few years. Ford canceling that $1.6 billion facility in Mexico in favor of a $700 million facility in Michigan and on and on. Uh, this all before Donald Trump takes off. What do you make of it? Well, I think it's very good to begin with, Neil. And, and second off, you got to ask yourself the reason why is this happening? Is it because he's a bully and he's threatening people? Or could it be because he's laid out a pro-growth, pro-business, low-tax, low low-regulation agenda where he can show corporations throughout the world that we have the best workforce the best capital markets, the best technology, and that if you decide to do business here in America, we're going to make sure you don't have to give all your money back to the government. You're going to have steady electricity, steady water, steady workforce. I think he's making America great again, yes, but he's also making America very attractive for business again, Neil. You know, Robert, much has been made of the fact that in this latest Fiat Chrysler uh, announcement that it's going to invest a billion dollars to add upwards of 2,000 jobs, that these were plans that were in place already. I don't know what the case is here, but if, there, if the plans were in place and a lot of other companies are echoing them and, and announcing the same, what do you think? Is, is the real story here. Well, listen, uh, as you know, Neil, I know Sergio Marchione because when I was running UBS, he was the lead director for us. The guy is the, probably one of the best businessmen in the world. He sees that the economy in the U.S. is doing better versus the rest of the world. It is not surprising that an auto company is going to invest in the U.S. more than around the world because we have auto sales back over six, 15 million again, I think even maybe 16 million, which is our near record high. And so this is not surprising to me that this is where he wants to put investment. And then, you know, with respect to 2,000 jobs, obviously that's a great thing anytime we're getting U.S. jobs. But let's be clear, the auto bailout saved 1.5 million jobs. So I'm glad that there's a pay forward going on with the auto sector to try to make sure not only what the government did by stepping in, that they're continuing it post the Obama administration on, on a pay forward type basis. All right. Now, the irony there, yeah, Craig, yeah, but, is that but, Ford was not part of that deal. Now, no, Ford was, is an, among those making the concessions. It was here. Chrysler, GM and all the vendors. But, but, wait, right, but wait, 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 wait a minute, Neil. We got to look at what the cost of that was. You wiped out the GM bondholders. That's the first time in the history of this country that I can remember that the bondholders were wiped out in order to be able to take care of the unions. And look, I agree with Mr. Wolf in that 
We, Mr. Obama inherited a very slow economy. We were in a worldwide slowdown. We had too much capacity, there wasn't demand, and that's a very difficult thing. So we were slow all over the world, and he's correct. Auto sales are picking up, business is picking up, things are looking better, so people are becoming more optimistic. However, this time we have in the White House, and I'm not saying Mr. Obama didn't do the best he could, we have a guy who's, look at how he's loaded the team, Neil. He's got business leaders, he has people that want to focus on making America productive again. Just creating money does not create wealth. We need to do make in order to create wealth. And that helps everybody, right. not right. just the, um, not just businesses. All right. You espouse your positions very well, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Again, just to update you here, regards to what we've heard from Jack Myers, what we hear from other business titans who have a chance to chat with the president-elect. Uh, we hear you. We want to be on your good side. We don't want you to tweet nasty things about us. So we have committed right now to uh, hiring one million American workers. There. Are you satisfied? It works. It gets a good press. And in this case, it gets Donald Trump to come down to the lobby and soil himself with the reporters who were there, too. That is progress. That is power. That is influence. And that gets a big monkey off your back for the time being. Meanwhile, we're hearing from a lot of these companies that don't necessarily play on the same page as Donald Trump, including the Toyota CEO, who is still, still...